I think this uh, this part of the session would have been better as a wet lab session because it's all about uh, access. But uh, I'll have to try and illustrate as much as I can through slides, and I hope to do that uh, as uh, best as possible. Um, We've heard already that you know TAVI is expanding. We've done all the high risk um, cases now. Intermediate cases are, are basically good part of our patients are intermediate risk, and some talk about low risk group. And I think access is going to be one of the most important sort of um, decision making process because, as you will see through the talk, if we go to transfemoral, then um, easier access, easier recovery, and um, you'll find that uh, TABI will become one of the most uh, performed procedure for aortic stenosis. So I'll hope to cover uh, these various uh, access points today. So we'll start with the transfemoral. We are surgeons, we've learned anatomy at medical school and uh, we've uh, had a few patients where we've done a transfemoral cannulation maybe in the dissection case or for the odd um, minimal access case that we've been involved with. But the transfemoral access remains the most common access route uh, in the TAVI uh, world, uh, over 90% nowadays, especially with the devices that we have on the market. Um, Ganesh has already mentioned uh, the 14 French equivalent. These are really very small devices and transfemorally they work very, very well. There are a few things, a few provisors though, um, when we come to transfemoral access and I think it's important that we assess um, the uh, access point appropriately with um, a CT scan with contrast. And the few things that you want to, to be aware of and you want to find out before you get down to doing your TAVI is, first of all, the size of the artery. It's very rare to have very small femoral arteries in our patient group, but sometimes you do see them. And, and I think if you get femoral arteries less than five and a half centimeters and you have big devices, you will struggle to get them up, up the femoral artery. The other uh, issue is you look at calcification at your puncture site. Most of us will be using a percutaneous uh, approach with uh, closure devices such as Broglide or Crostar. And if you have a lot of calcium, then you will get into trouble when you get to the closure site. The third thing is about the bifurcation of, of the femoral artery. You want a, a bifurcation which is quite low, so that where you puncture, you don't uh, get into trouble in obstructing the, the side branches. And then finally is about tortuosity. Uh, the more tortuous the, um, the iliacs are, the more um, tricky it is to get your, your TAVI devices up the, the aorta. And obviously there are tips and tricks using uh, buddy wires and, and uh, uh, more stiff wires to try to straighten these, uh, these uh, tor tortuous vessels. But overall, the picture you see um, on your left is something you definitely should avoid and um, probably refer to a friendly cardiac surgeon to help you with an access uh, elsewhere in the body. The device itself, the delivery um, of the TAVI through the transfer route is very easy. Most of these procedures take um, under an hour. Um, and I think in our practice, um, the access point, if it gives us trouble, probably takes longer to sort out than actually delivering the, the TAVI valve. In terms of complications, when you go transfemorally with the VARC criteria, you could say there's about 5 to 10% uh, uh, complication rate. This is what we quote our patients in the consent. Um, most of them are minor issues with um, just a leakage around the, the puncture site. But occasionally, you, you, you can get into uh, bigger problems. Uh, and most commonly, you will find that you get into bigger problems because you haven't planned for it. And these will be things like uh, dissecting the vessel, or even disrupting the vessel and disconnecting it from uh, the, the, the aorta. Uh, occasionally you will get a pseudoaneurysm, but that again, if you are uh, careful enough when you're closing and, uh, and making sure that there is no leak uh, at the end of the procedure when you do your final check angiogram. The access where surgeons are more required, most required are, are, are the surgical access areas, of the subclavian artery or axillary artery, uh, we use the left septal approach. Um, in our practice, it's about three to five percent of the population that will get a, a sub left septal approach. It's very actually easy to do. Um, before I started doing it, I always thought, "Gosh, you know, where is it? Where will it be?" But actually, it's something that I really enjoy doing now. Uh, again, here, just like with the femoral, a few provisos. Just be careful about the brachial plexus. They do like they do look like a vessel. 
and they do transmit pulsations. So if you put your finger on it, you might, f you might think it's actually the, the artery, but it isn't. Um, uh, but so long you're sort of you're careful, um, you can easily access it. Some people use a, a graph um, uh, attached to the artery and then deliver the, the, the device to the graph. Uh, I just go directly through, through the artery. On one occasion, I've had to patch the, uh, the, the, the access point, but on the other occasions, just a direct closure uh, surgically has, has worked quite well. What is great when you're doing uh, TAVI um, and, 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 and subclavian access is you have a, a hybrid sort of setup. So you can give, uh, you can give some contrast uh, down the, the arch and you know exactly where the artery is even before you, you start cutting on the outside and you can just go straight down onto it. And then once um, you've got the, um, uh, the, the device in, the delivery is fairly straightforward. Um, the, the one thing I would say though is most of our TAWI um, delivery uh, systems are devised to be used uh, uh, transfemorally. So you end up with this really long sort of snake that you have to have three people behind you <laughs> holding the device um, so that you can actually keep it sterile and deliver it properly. Uh, direct aortic, uh, very rarely used, but again, it's one of those uh, that can be used. Um, I use a, a, an inverted uh, a, a, a J uh, mini stenotomy. Um, it's fairly straightforward. I have to say the outcome uh, of the patients having a direct aortic compared to transfemoral uh, is a longer recovery period, more pain, take a bit longer to be discharged from hospital. Um, so we really use this as a sort of a last resort. The problem I find mostly with the direct aortic is, is one, the sheath that uh, you have is not really made um, to be used in that position. So Boston, I think, came up with a sheet which had some markers on it to guide you. Um, we've actually gone sheathless um, and, um, when we're doing direct aortic and, and it's worked quite well for us. Similarly as with the, uh, with the, with the subclavian approach, because it's so short um, from your operating um, access area to the, to the device delivery area, you have to have a couple of people behind you um, supporting the device. But it, it works very well um, when, once you get in there. Transapical, I'm not too sure whether anybody is doing transapical anymore uh, for, uh, for TAVI. Uh, it is much more invasive and the Achilles heel is certainly the uh, entry point in the ventricle, which uh, can give you a lot of trouble in terms of bleeding uh, and occasionally uh, pseudoaneurysm formation. Um, however, the transapical approach probably will become more popular again once the mitral valve uh, prosthesis uh, get uh, on the way. Uh, but I think for TAVI itself, very few or very rarely we are, we are having um, to use the, the transapical uh, approach. It's fairly straightforward once uh, you deliver the valve. Once you, I, th I think the, the most important part uh, when you do a transapical approach is to get good suture, plegated sutures around your apex and so that at the end you don't um, have to deal with a big hematoma that, that forms within the ventricular muscle. So these are probably the most uh, current used uh, access points for, uh, for TAVI delivery with the transferal being the majority of them. Um, some of, uh, sort of previous um, uh, 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 teams have used um, a carotid artery approach. I'm not too sure how much it will remain popular and I think it sort of died a bit of a, of a quiet, uh, pain, painful death. Um, it's, it's not used very much a, a anymore. But the one thing that is actually getting some press is the transcable approach. Um, and that's going through the femoral vein and then accessing the aorta by creating a, a, an arterial venous fistula in the abdominal area and then um, delivering your, your, your device uh, through that route. And when you finish, you have like an umbrella device um, um, to close the uh, arteriovenous uh, fistula. Um, how popular it will become, I'm not too sure, given that most of the TAVI devices now 
have become quite small in terms of their delivery uh, size. But there may be a, a place for these where you do have some patients with quite severe lower peripheral vascular problem uh, and probably just the abdominal or higher aorta is, is accessible for, ac for, for a good access to deliver the, the device. Um, yeah, that just summarizes the various steps um, in the transcaval. Uh, it looks very complicated to me. I haven't tried it, um, um, but it's been described. I think overall we will find that uh, the um, transfemoral approach remains uh, the approach of choice. Um, it's the quickest uh, recovery. Most of these cases are done under local anesthetic uh, and sedation. And uh, most patients, if they don't need a pacemaker, will probably go home on day two, day three, I would think. Is that right, Ganesh? Probably the same in your, your practice. <laughs> Next day. <thing. laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>